Hey guys, coming to you from beautiful Florence. Are you ready to come see The Last Supper with me? I know you're thinking, wait, I thought The Last Supper was in Milan. And you'd be right. Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper is indeed in Milan. That may be one of his most famous paintings, and it is almost certainly the most famous depiction of Jesus's Last Supper. But Leonardo da Vinci's version is not the only one, nor was it the first of its kind. Here in this Renaissance city, rich with a long history of artistic innovation, you will find the origins of the Last Supper paintings and where Leonardo da Vinci might have gotten some of his inspiration for the version he painted. In this video, I'm going to share with you where you can see some stunning examples of Last Supper paintings, some of them even for free. So first of all, what is the Last Supper or Ultima Cena in Italian? In Italian, we use the word cenare, which means to dine. The word cenacle comes from the Latin cenaculum, or dining room. And we use the word cenacolo, which uses the same root, to refer to a refectory or dining hall of a monastery or convent. The original cenacle is a room in Jerusalem which tradition holds to be the site of the Last Supper, the final meal that Jesus held with the Twelve Apostles. Over time, many artists depicted this historic event. While the version by Leonardo da Vinci became its best known version, that layout was not the only way it was depicted. Here inside the cloister of the Basilica of Santa Croce, we can see another cenacolo. It was painted by Taddeo Gaddi, who was a student of Giotto. One of the things that's particular about this cenacolo and that I find extraordinarily beautiful is the way the cross is depicted as the tree of life. You can see a much smaller version of the depiction of the cross as the tree of life when you visit the Accademia, where Michelangelo's statue of David can be found. This is not one of the free ones because you have to pay to get into Santa Croce. The Basilica of Santo Spirito is a stunning example of Renaissance architecture by Filippo Brunelleschi, who transformed it in the 15th century. In the 14th century, the prominent Cambi family had commissioned the decoration of the eastern wall to the great late Gothic master Andrea Orcagna. Orcagna painted the Last Supper with scenes of the crucifixion above. In the 19th century, monastic orders were suppressed and the whole complex was abandoned. At one point, the refectory was even used as a shelter for trams. The refectory of Santo Spirito sits next door to the basilica and today is a separate building to visit. While the basilica is free, there's a fee to visit the refectory. When you visit this cenacolo, you can actually clearly see the big rectangular space that they once removed to make a doorway for the trams to come in when it was used as a depot. Unfortunately, this means that this beautiful cenacolo by Orcagna is one of the most poorly preserved, but you can still visit it and see at least some of it, including the crucifixion above it. So we are here in a spot that's very close to the center of Florence. We're not that far from San Lorenzo, the Duomo, and we're about to enter a very special place. This is Sant'Apollonia, and we are going to see one of the most beautiful cenacoli here in Florence. In 1450, Andrea del Castagno painted a beautiful fresco of the Last Supper on the wall of this refectory, or cenacolo. But because it was part of this convent of cloistered nuns, nobody saw it until the 19th century. Today, this cenacolo is open to visitors. The crazy thing is, it's free, <laughs> and it's almost never, ever crowded. I've never seen more than one or two other people in here. Let's go check it out. So this is the refectory. It was the refectory, or dining hall, called cenacolo. And this stunning fresco was painted in 1450 by Andrea del Castagno. So looking above the Last Supper, you can see scenes of the Passion. And unfortunately, they are not in the best shape. A few things to note are the beautiful panels that look like they're meant to be marble. This is reminiscent of ancient Roman first style painting. You can also see these fake marble panels at the back as well. 
And above those panels, you can see what is called a sinopia, which means a preparatory sketch. So this is the sinopia, or preparatory sketch, of the scenes above the Last Supper, which are scenes from The Passion. Now this cenacolo differs from the one that Tadeo Gatti did in Santa Croce. Here we can see that the scene is much more three-dimensional. There's somewhat of a use of perspective, giving us the sense that the scene is inset. Also note the halos here. They're quite different from the halos that Tadeo Gatti painted on his Last Supper, which were much more typical of the art of that era. You'll notice that in many of these Florentine cenacoli, Judas is on the opposite side of the table, facing Jesus. Leonardo's Last Supper has Judas on the other side of the table, along with the other apostles. And of course, you can see that Judas has no halo. And unlike the other apostles and Jesus himself, he's wearing dark, somber attire. Here, we can see the name of the apostles along the bottom. And of course, Judas is not mentioned. Another artist who famously painted several versions of The Last Supper was Domenico Ghirlandaio. Ghirlandaio was one of the most popular Florentine artists of the time. He was Michelangelo's first boss and teacher but he was a master artist in his own right. Ghirlandaio painted many masterpieces that you can easily see around Florence. He also painted The Last Supper on several occasions within the space of a few years. In these versions, the basic arrangement is the same as that in the fresco by Andrea del Castagno. While Ghirlandaio painted three versions of The Last Supper, one of them is slightly outside of Florence, but the other two are easy to see inside Florence itself. One of my favorite versions of The Last Supper here in Florence is the version by Domenico Ghirlandaio inside of the cloister of the Church of Ogni Santi. It's free to visit this beautiful cenacolo. Unfortunately, it's only open a couple times a month, so you really have to organize yourself if you want to visit this beautiful fresco. Right after Ghirlandaio painted this fresco, he was called to Rome to paint the walls of the Sistine Chapel. The second Cenacolo by Ghirlandaio that you can easily visit here in Florence is inside of the Museum of San Marco. Now this Cenacolo of Ghirlandaio inside of the Museum of San Marco is not free to visit because you have to pay an entry fee to visit the museum, but I assure you it is very well worth a visit. It's likely that Leonardo da Vinci was familiar with the paintings of the Last Supper by both Castagno and Ghirlandaio and may have been influenced by both artists but clearly Leonardo da Vinci made his own version, which was so much more dynamic and full of emotion. Another Last Supper you can visit in Florence, although it's slightly outside the city center, is the Cenacolo by Andrea del Sarto in the church of San Salvi. In 1527, Andrea del Sarto painted his Cenacolo on this refectory. As had become the fashion after Leonardo painted his Last Supper, all the apostles are depicted around Jesus on the same side, including Judas. Up to now, all of these Cenacoli or Last Suppers that I've wanted to share with you are the ones that were painted early on and that helped influence Leonardo da Vinci's version, and that were also immediately influenced by his version. But there are a few more Cenacoli or Last Supper paintings that are maybe a little less known here in Florence that I want to share with you. The Cenacolo by Alessandro Allori in Santa Maria del Carmine is a really beautiful version and so clearly modeled after Leonardo's rendition. When you visit Santa Croce in the same refectory where you can see Taddeo Gaddi's Cenacolo, you can also see a stunning version painted by Giorgio Vasari. This Last Supper painting is famous in part because it was nearly destroyed in Florence's Great Flood of November 4th, 1966. It was finally restored between 2004 and 2016, and you can see it high on the back wall of the refectory. It actually has a system of counterweights that enable it to be rapidly lifted by mechanical means in the event of a flood. If you visit the church of Santa Maria Novella and go to its museum in the back, you can see two more extraordinary Last Supper paintings, very different from the Leonardo da Vinci style versions.
While Alessandro Allori did paint a Last Supper fresco following Leonardo's style for the refectory of Santa Maria del Carmine, he also painted a different version, which you can see high up on the wall of the museum in Santa Maria Novella. This Last Supper is oil on cloth and has a very different dynamic to the ones we've been discussing so far. Allori revolutionized the theme, enlivening the traditional table. You can see the figures of the apostles rise and bend towards Christ in the center. The shape of the table and the work of art itself is not oblong, but rather semicircular. The background is also different, showing two twisted columns and otherwise not seeming to add much to the scene as the perspective of earlier works have done. The apostles' robes are beautiful and silky and folded and shadowed to highlight the depth and movement of the figures. Plauti Lanelli's Last Supper is probably one of the most significant paintings in the history of art. This extraordinary cenacolo was probably the first and only version of this theme painted by a woman artist who lived in the Renaissance period. Plautila was a Dominican nun and self-taught. She never had any training in art or anatomy whatsoever. Can you imagine that she painted this masterpiece without ever having any training and only by copying works of art that she had seen? I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to Cenacoli or Last Supper paintings here in Florence. I wanna give a shout out to my dear friend and art historian, Claudia Vigiani, for introducing me to them. And for lots more Florence content, check out my Florence playlist right here.